Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Gaming with me, Tony Mo, and we are here today talking Lawbreakers for two very big reasons. Number one, in case you didn't know, they are running one final beta. This beta is going to be open. In fact, you can pre-download it right now. It's going to start this Friday on the 28th and run until Monday the 31st for both PC and PlayStation 4. This is one last opportunity, an entire weekend, ladies and gentlemen, to play Lawbreakers for free and to figure out whether or not it's worth spending $30 on. Teaser. Totally is. We're going to dig a little bit deeper today, though, because they've also launched the patch notes for all the juicy changes and additions that will be available inside of the upcoming beta. A lot of these I'm very excited about. There was a lot of feedback provided by the community to the team at Boss Key with the most recent beta, and I'm interested to see the changes they've made. They also have some pretty damn sexy patch notes. It's not often that I record directly from the patch notes page for a game and then just fill in gameplay during the empty spots because they got actual gifts, man. I don't know if, like, who's involved in this, if it's Ronin, or, like, who's doing all this cool stuff, but these patch notes are dope. And it's awesome to scroll down to, say, the Assassin and actually see a demonstration of the Romeris Charge Fire time decrease. I like that. So let's go ahead and start at the top with the new additions that will be available inside of the beta. We've got a new sandbox tutorial mode, and if this sounds like what I think it is, it's an in-game playable tutorial mode, which I think would be fantastic. I spoke a lot about Quake Champions and how its video-only tutorials at this stage in the game's release simply aren't enough. Quake is a very difficult game. They need to have actual video tutorials and in-game content as well that shows people how to strafe jump and, you know, the best ways to go from this point of the map to that point of the map and rocket jumping and all of the complexities that make Quake Quake. They're still going to have to learn those things. So I'm hoping that this sandbox tutorial mode has some of that DNA Either way, it's nice to have in-game playable tutorial mode stuff, not just videos. Having videos was great during beta, and I love that Boss Key did that so early on, but I'm genuinely excited about that sandbox tutorial mode and to see just how fleshed out and interesting it is. They've also got some new Twitch features, including account linking, a broadcaster icon when streaming, they've got Twitch channel name swap functionality for your Steam ID, and this final open beta will feature all character customization options that will be available at launch with Lawbreakers. You bet your bottom I'm going to be making a video looking through all that stuff. People love that. Why do people eat that stuff up so much? Let's go ahead and take a look at the actual gameplay changes, of which there are many. The first thing is a massive reduction in the melee range for kicks. It's down from 600 to 400. That's actually a theme you're going to see across this entire update. All of the classes that had some sort of a substantial melee system have seen a reduction from 600 to 400. That includes the Assassin, the Juggernaut, and the Wraith. Let's go ahead and dive into the Assassin, though. My personal thoughts on the Assassin during the final beta... Fun class to play, kind of difficult, kind of challenging, but occasionally you would go up and against an assassin that felt really irritating, as if their arc blades were hitting you from half a mile away. It seems they've addressed just about all of these things. The Romeris actually saw a nerf with the most recent beta. It's getting a little bit of a buff to bring it just a bit back into the fray. I think it's important that we still have to focus on a combination of arc blade damage and Romeris damage, so people can't just spam the Romeris, which was the case in closed beta 2, I believe. So the Ramirez ammo increase has gone from 4 to 5 rounds. They've actually decreased the charge fire time on the alt fire from 0.8 to 0.7. They've increased the AoE damage range on Frenzy, which is your ultimate ability. It's up from 600 to 650, which is great. And they've also gone ahead and massively increased the amount of health restoration you get on hit during Frenzy. It's from 35 to 70. That's a pretty big deal, and I think that's a really smart change. When I look at the Assassin and the areas in which I felt like I was being unnecessarily punished, it was every time I got in close to make use of my Arc Blades, which is why I think a lot of players just fell to the Romerus when it was more powerful. They got punished again and again for getting in with the Arc Blades, even during Frenzy. So now if I close in, you know, actually get behind the target and I'm, I'm being mobile, I'm not just standing in front of the Juggernaut letting them blast me with a shotgun and kick me in the face, I can be rewarded while I'm in Frenzy by getting much more health into my pool, so I can continue to do damage, and when I finish killing the target, have enough health to make a getaway or to even engage another target. I really like the idea of that restoration increase. Now here's what I was talking about earlier, Arc Blades have had their range reduced from 600 to 400. I think this was a wise move. Uh, there were plenty of situations where I would be kiting away from an assassin in 0G. Like, I can see them feet away from me, and they're still hitting me with Arc Blades. It was a little bit frustrating, hopefully this will deal with that. 
There's also a cooldown reduction for dash and grapple. It's gone from 4.5 seconds to 4 seconds. So you're going to be doing dash and grapple more often. This is another big theme throughout all of the changes we're going to see here. Any of the more, any, it's not just the more mobile characters, but all of the characters have had something done to increase their mobility. So they're on more of an even playing field when it comes to traversing the environment in both zero G and in regular gravity. Let's move on and talk about the Enforcer. The Enforcer was a class that I think a lot of us were concerned with because we felt if the Wraith got nerfed or, you know, if other classes got tweaked to a certain extent, the Enforcer would start to pull out on top. Even in the first uh, competitive match that I saw for the last beta, there was just Enforcers. No one was really using the Wraith. The Enforcer was the was the go-to guy. His damage output was through the roof. Uh, the distortion field made him incredibly powerful at long ranges. He was the sniper. There was no reason to even run the Gunslinger when you had this guy around. So a lot of changes to sort of put him into his own specific position while still making sure he's powerful. Starting with Aerator Ammo. It's been increased from 30 to 35, but the max damage of the Aerator has been decreased from 27 to 25. More importantly, its damage at max range has been decreased from 16 to 13, hopefully doing away with the sniper capabilities of the Enforcer class and bringing the Gunslinger up into the meta a little bit more. Now, they're also modifying fuel gained per damage dealt while in Distortion Field. So it's from, from 0.5 to 0.25, so cut in half. This is going to make Distortion Field a little bit less god tier in terms of allowing players to just keep juicing up their fuel pool while laying out damage with that. The bonus rate of fire from Distortion Field has also been reduced from 30 to 20%. So kind of a, a blanket balance going on here with the Enforcer. Let's make him a little bit less powerful, but let's make sure that players still have enough, you know, ammunition to function where he should function. And considering the rest of his tool set, uh, you know, that EMP grenade and how powerful that thing is and in his ultimate ability, the Bloodhounds, I think he's still going to be a force to be reckoned with. He's, has, I'm quoting the actual patch notes here. I think he's still going to be a force to be reckoned with. Was going to say that anyways. Uh, and I'm just happy to see those changes. But more importantly, because I think it's going to bring the Gunslinger into the fray a little bit more, especially since he's getting a whole slew of changes and creature comforts to just make him a, a better uh, class selection on the battlefield. Let's start with all the things happening with Tack Knife. So they're increasing Tack Knife's thrown damage from 100 to 200, making it a more viable combat option. I love this. I love throwing knives in any game. Using the Tomahawk back in the days of Black Ops 2 was like the best thing ever. Black Ops 1, I should say. I think Black Ops 2 had it as well. Anytime I can throw a blade at somebody's face and then, you know, clean them up with like one revolver shot, that's a good day. So I like that they're doing that. They've also increased Tack Knife Gravity from 0 to 0.75. So I'm not sure if that means it's going to actually just create like a little bit of a distortion field. I don't really fully understand that, to be completely honest. Or if it just means that when we actually throw the attack knife, uh, it's going to have a different sort of arc. I'm not entirely sure. Because the next thing is that attack knife melee range uh, has gone from 225 to 300. So that's a nice little addition there. I'm thinking that means we can throw a little bit further, but maybe they've changed the way gravity uh, is uh, actually affecting the attack knife. Now, warp cooldown has been reduced from 5 seconds to 4 seconds. Again, continuing that trend of making sure that everybody's a little bit more mobile. This is really big for the gunslinger, though, because warp is all about in gunfight mobility. Like, this is what the gunslinger relies on, so he can dash and dodge and break line of sight and continue to engage on the front line with both Alpha and Omega, so I like that change. The equalizer time between shots has been reduced from 0.125 to 0.1, and they've also fixed the Omega's damage falloff curve. Apparently that was a bit of an issue, uh, so probably just gonna see it being a little bit more effective at range, I would guess, which I like. The Gunslinger's supposed to be the sniper in this game, right? We don't have like a traditional sniper role, which I'm totally fine with. We don't need scope snipers in Lawbreakers. Precision shot revolver stuff, you know, having a combo with your other gun. I love that. I think that's super cool. I think that's a way better uh, class to have than a sniper. So, you know, making that Omega have that long range capability is going to be very important for that class. Let's move on and take a look at the Juggernaut. Juggernaut was, was kind of my baby at the start of the last beta. This was a super fun to play class, and it was such a change over the previous beta where the Juggernaut felt practically useless. However, it seems that Boss Key also believes the Juggernaut was a little bit too powerful. So they've made some really smart changes here. Number one, Armor Protocol fuel cost has been increased from 10% per second to 15% per second. So uh, Armor Protocol, activating it was really dependent on how much fuel you had left in your reserves. You could get a lot of it or less of it. Basically, this just means you're going to be able to have Armor Protocol up less often than you normally would, which is a good thing because it just made him like god tier 
in sustain, man. You know, there'd be like a squishy on you. He's laying into you for like 10 seconds, and then you just pop armor protocol and finish him off. You know, it just lasted forever when a squishy was going up against you. More importantly, though, they've reduced shotgun damage per pellet from 18 to 15. In pale range, again, really looking at the melees and making sure they all kind of fall in line. It's been reduced from 600 to 400. A lot of the squishy characters, once again, going to be very happy about this, and I think they should be. Hollow Deflector Wall, though, has had its health reduced from 2,000 to 1,100. This is a very important change. People were stacking the Juggernaut and Blitzball, putting up two walls. Your team could barely eat through one of them before they made their way into the Blitzball. They got killed by the enemy team. It was just a frustrating tactic to deal with, no matter how effective and uh, intelligent it was. So to see Hollow Deflector Wall's health be reduced by that much is a very good sign. You know, it's still going to be a useful tool, but I don't think you're going to be able to get away with just stacking, you know, like one of them on a doorway and expecting it to stop the team from making their push for Blitzball. Will it slow them down? Yes, but it will no longer stop them for like five minutes straight. Really happy about that. Let's move on and talk about one of the most controversial roles in the last beta, the Wraith. Bossky themselves says, Wraith was way too strong in beta 3, due mostly to free damage on the slide kick in a ridiculous stab range. But beyond that, we feel he's simply too mobile to set at 350 health. I could not agree more. Now, they're not looking to just slow him down entirely. They're dropping his health from 350 to 325, and they're making a bunch of tweaks to how he deals combo damage. So the slide damage has been reduced from 85 to 25, and the wasp stat range has been reduced from 600 to 400. That's a really big deal. They've also made it so consecutive wasp stabs will no longer allow you to move through the air more quickly. It actually uh, results in a lunging impulse decrease. So the more you do it, the less far and the less uh, sort of propulsion you're going to get from each lunge. That's not a mobility mechanic that I was happy with, you know, they're just being able to spam that and like fly through zero G. It's like, no, 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 you should have to use your Spectre. Like everybody else, you should have to use wall jumps. And the fact that you have a triple jump ability, you know, that's what the Wraith should be about. So I'm happy about that change. Very happy about it. I think it's going to put him in a good position for mobility. He's still going to be fast, but he's not going to be unnecessarily quick. Now they've also went ahead and modified Spectre pistol damage at max range. They've reduced it from 13 to 12. I think when we look at just the Spectre Pistol on its own, it wasn't actually that much of an issue. You know, people, I think, mentioned it a lot, but the real problem with the class came from him being so health heavy for what he was about, and just that crazy combo damage with the free slide kick and, you know, the stab range. It was just, it was nuts, man. He would get in your face and just lay into you after he got done poking at you with the Spectre Pistol. So now, if this guy's poking at you with the Spectre Pistol for max range, and you're not focusing him, and he still closes in with his 325 health, and he still manages to combo and kill you with that reduced slide damage and with that reduced wasp stab range, it's going to be a little bit more on you. We'll have to see how it actually plays out, but I'm thinking those are some good numbers, some good changes, and you're going to be able to blame yourself a little bit more, and people who can actually focus this guy down and actually engage him with the Enforcer or the Gunslinger or the Titan, they're going to be rewarded for that. You know, They're going to be able to get that damage on him now and kill him a bit more quickly. Speaking of the Titan, ladies and gentlemen, they're making some changes that are making me real happy. I started playing the Titan at the end of the last beta and fell in love with what is probably one of the most difficult and frustrating to play classes in the game. It's just not an easy class to play. So they've added one more rocket to the hammerhead. They've increased its reload speed by 5%. We can actually see the GIF of it. It looks way quicker. 5% is actually a lot when it comes to first-person shooter standards. Like, there's that 5%, it adds up between all those shots. They've also went ahead and modified hammerhead on-screen real estate during reload and blind fire uh, to be on a firm kind of covering the center of the screen. I honestly never noticed that. But now that I think about it, the class did kind of feel claustrophobic <laughs> sometimes, so maybe that had everything to do with it. They've also, though, reduced pulverize uh, cooldown from 12 seconds to 8 seconds. So we're going to be able to pulverize more often, giving us more opportunities to use that as combo damage during gunfights, which I think is really important. Having that extra rocket so we can do rocket jumping more often and blind fires in 0G, and you know, just having that pulverize up more, more frequently, being able to fire more rockets because of the re reload speed and being increased. These are all very, very positive changes for the Titan. I still think it's going to be one of the hardest classes in the game, but I'm happy with where these changes are headed. I'm looking forward to playing the class in this final open beta. Lastly, we got a small tweak for the Vanguard, but I think this is actually a pretty big deal. They've reduced Pulsar fuel cost from 40% to 30%. So a big part of the Vanguard is to sort of, you know, spin up your minigun, start to do damage, and then sometimes even close in to get more precision fire, and then use that Pulsar to maybe finish off your enemy, do some combo damage, you know, a little bit of burst damage, and then make an escape. 
But if you were in a fight and you were really using a lot of the Pulsar, you were burning through fuel like crazy and it made it practically impossible to make it get away before you got cleaned up. So I feel like that 10% is going to go a long way for the class. I know some people would have liked to see more changes. A lot of people mentioned to me, you know, uh, faster spin up time on the minigun, but I feel like that was just kind of the nature of this class, right? It's not supposed to be like in the fray consistently with everyone else. It is very much that hit and run jet fighter style approach. We'll have to see. I didn't play a lot of the Vanguard personally, so I'd love to hear the, what you guys think. Those of you who really played a lot of Vanguard during the last beta or even in previous betas, uh, you know, what do you think of that change and what else might you like to see down the line? We'll have to see how it plays out. But is there anything else that you would have liked to see the Vanguard have uh, in terms of modifications, buffs, so on and so forth? Now, the rest of the patch notes are just loaded with more general improvements. We've got massive modifications to matchmaking to just make matches more even, which I think is really important. Uh, personal performance is going to affect the MMR. They've changed like the way that the MR, MMR matchmaking queue, they just, they've done so much stuff. Uh, they got rid of that vote to stay button, which was a great thing because it just didn't, it didn't make sense to have that, you know, it's just, I like this. I like a lot of the changes going on here. Uh, hopefully this will do a lot of positive things for the MMR and making sure that quick play still functions as quick play, but that we also have more evenly matched matches more frequently. If you guys want to check out the full patch notes in detail, I'll have them pinned down in the comment section below along with a link to the uh, beta details for PlayStation 4 and PC. Be sure to check those out. This is your final opportunity, guys, to play the game completely for free before launch. It's going to be $30 on both platforms at launch. They will be launching on the exact same day. That is August 8th. So give this game a go. I really do think Lawbreakers is something special. It's absurdly fun. People are always asking me, Tony, are you being paid to talk positively about this game? Hell no, I'm not being paid to talk positively about this game. I like it, so I want to tell you about it. You ever have something you like in life, like a really good sandwich shop, and you just want everybody to know about it because you're not a complete douche and you don't hide cool things from other people? That's how I feel about Lawbreakers. So get out there, play the game, and then by the way, it's only $30. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any thoughts of your own, if you'd like to share your opinions on the changes here in the patch notes as someone who's previously played Lawbreakers or any questions as to what the hell Lawbreakers actually is, feel free to let me know down in the comment section below. I will be kicking ass in the beta this weekend. I hope to see you there. And as always, remember to play smart, remember to play to challenge yourself, but most importantly, remember to play for fun.